this is a set of case laws and law of agency um, a very relevant area actually it's agencies because most of the businesses do uh, belong to the agencies rather than just uh, buying and selling so we may have a better chance taking legal action against the principals rather than uh, the shops the agents so while we may think about sale of goods as uh, probably the most prevalent law in the world when it comes to business law of agency is no second actually could be ahead even of sale of age uh, you know sale of goods in some aspects so it's a very important area okay let's go by one by one cases uh, one is the great northern railway versus chef Sofield, 1874 um, the particular case uh, you know you can you know the story here it's about uh, you don't have to be appointed as an agent if what you do has done the benefit to the other party and if it, it was done as of urgency if it was done because there was no way to get information from the other one other party or get permission from the other party if it was he who benefited eventually the court may consider you as an agent out of necessity and you will be entitled to obtain compensation just like in this case let's get the next one yeah look so limited versus Cooper 1941 take a look at the case please So what is it? You know, when it comes to commission in agency, um, you know, the commission to the agent comes after completion of the task, not beforehand. That's how. But of course, if the agent wants to get compensation or money, uh, even if the work is not done, then he better put it in the contract itself. He can't demand it as a right. So the right to claim commission depends on the ability to complete the contract. But otherwise it's a possibility if the agent and principal agreed. I think. Take a look at this, Vatu versus Fenwick. Again, it's a long writing. You can take your time at uh, reading it. Um, it's actually I've copied from the internet on this and a little bit of did some adjustments. Uh, year is 1893 but a very very relevant case here what did the court say you know if um, um, the principal does not inform the outside parties about the limitation of capacities of his uh, members his team his manager right uh, the outside parties have the right to believe that uh, those people have such and such normal capacities and thinking that way they could go for contracts and principal cannot avoid those contracts principal must inform the third parties also about the capacities of his uh, agents or his team his managers failure to do so would make the principal liable that's the thing. Take here. Springer versus Great Western Railway, 1921, another railway case. So what is it about? Yeah. Again, it's the topic was on the necessity. Um, you know, necessity comes on three particular requirements. Number one, an act that was urgently needed. Two, uh, it is done to the benefit of the other party. Three, there should be complete breakdown in communication with the other party. So that's why you decide to do it on your own for his benefit. There should be a complete breakdown in communication. But here, in this case, there was the chance to communicate. So you cannot use the defense of necessity in the court. Remember, the agency of necessity is de determined only by the court. Bridger versus Blatspiel stamp and Hecock Limited. What's this case? Yeah. 
so uh, you know agency contract is a contract of bona fide that means in good faith the good faith element shall be very much visible on the side of the agent as well as the principal any lack of bona fide might make the party who was missing out on bona fide be liable so uh, agency or necessity or any other agency requires the good faith element if the agent has not acted in good faith okay he would be liable armstrong versus jackson now one thing is uh, it's not mentioned here actually the principal identify the wrong done by the stockbroker five years later number of years doesn't matter you can take legal action from then on under contract law you have six years within which to file legal action from the day you identify the wrong done by the other party so here yes um, he has not done in good faith and he has uh, misused the confidential information also and he has sold his shares to the principal without telling that to the principal secret profit so multiple wrongs by the agent here Lucifero versus Ca versus Castel. What is that? Again, right? Agent has a duty to act bona fide in good faith through the benefit of the principal. Agent cannot make secret profits. If he does, he can't make uh, a claim. You take a case of a Sri Lankan broker who gets money from both ends. Well, he's not an agent at all, right? Because he's making a secret profit from the other side. We can literally simply refuse to pay him if you know that he has got money from the other side because an agent cannot be double agent that's in spying you can have right in movies you can have you in real life in business there are no double agents double agents so good faith is a must andrew versus ramsey and company 1903 what is it again the principal has a right to honesty in agency good faith in agent if the agent breaks this uh, sacred vow that is right the commitment um, the agent may lose in the legal action that is a key thing that the court check did he really act as the agent of the principal or did he make secret profit did he uh, you know uh, make uh, some uh, act which is not bona fide that's the thing. Adamson versus Jarvis. So again, you can take back and uh, read the case. So what is it about? You know, if the agent suffers loss while working for the principal, honest losses, principal has the duty to um, you know uh, reimburse the agent on it if the agent has you know has unwillingly or reasonable in his reasonable acts suffered losses principal is liable to pay it is that for the losses young versus Stein B lawyers liabilities so there what happened was uh, you know um, a client that loses the capacity now in, in the legal uh, relationship the lawyer is the agent the client is actually the principal if the principal loses his capacity now here he becomes mentally uh, unstable entire contract dies with it you cannot take legal action against uh, um, you know the mental incapacity mentally incapacitated person he is not a person of uh, capacity so uh, the fact that he was uh, you know the client was uh, not in the right mind you technically um, uh, you know lose out in the case Yeah, Gausen versus Morton case. What is this? Ab 
ability by the agent to sell something in some agents relationships in actually many agents relationships principal authorizes the agent to carry on with this uh, contract also selling um, but of course it could be given or withdrawn by the principal but if he has given it as a written contract also especially in writing then the agent cannot withdraw it that is not possible and of course uh, this particular uh, ability to uh, make the contract or is connected to some duties to the agent they say the principal has some money to pay to the agent and the principal tells the agent all right you sell the property and recover your commission and from that you can cover up something like that then the principal cannot uh, stop the agent from doing what he does take a look Lloyd was great Smith and company limited 1912 It's about a uh, you know law firm the clerk what the employees does principles the employer is liable even under law of employment so here the conduct of uh, the clerk make the law firm liable the principal liable so he has done it clerk has done it in the ordinary course of business so whenever an agent does a wrong remember we have the right to take legal action against the principal. Turner versus Goldsmith. This is the last case. If the principal has given a particular contract to the agent that he would be a, I mean, appointed as an agent for a particular period of time, then if it was uh, not done so, the agent has the right to take legal action against the principal because it is a breach of a contract, breach of contract of agency. So the principal cannot uh, just have too many liberties with an agent. If you appoint an agent as per the contract, then the principal has a duty to honor the contract. If the principal doesn't honor the contract, action can be taken against uh, the principal by the agent. So these are the cases. Hope these cases would help in uh, identifying and understanding. Uh, very crucial area of uh, law of agency.